This is uh, some of the honors material for us. You'll study this again when you take chemistry, um, either next year's or as juniors. Uh, but our topic now is orbitals. We've already studied the Bohr model. So orbitals is yet another better explanation for an atom. It's a better understanding of where electrons are. The Bohr model, the idea of these set rings like the planetary model, that's not really true. The idea of energy levels is good, but the idea that electrons are actually going around these set little paths, not really true. So our orbital model is our better representation of where electrons are actually found in an atom. And instead of saying that electrons are on these set little rings, bless you, um, we say that they are in certain areas of space. So the orbitals sort of an explanation of the probability of where electrons would be found. I mean, most likely found here, or here, or here. And we indicate the orbitals with these letters, S, P, D, and F. And each letter sort of has a shape that goes along with it. So starting with the S orbital. This one kind of makes sense. The S orbital is simply a spherical shape. Again, not, not the idea of electrons going around on a ring around the outside, but just that electrons could be anywhere in that sphere if electrons are in the s orbital. The s orbital is the simplest uh, orbital, and it can only contain two electrons. So, like I said, it's sort of a, an explanation of the probability of where electrons can be. So if you take a hydrogen atom, which just has that one electron, well, where, all the, where is that electron found? At any given time, it's here, 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 or here. But, you know, kind of blur your eyes, obviously, most of the time, that electron's found in the center in sort of a spherical shape. All right, same with just graphing it. Of the time that uh, electron is found you know, this certain distance away from the nucleus, but obviously it's you know, mostly in this area. So mostly in this little spherical shape outside the nucleus. Obviously it would look like a sphere. All right, moving on to the p orbitals. These are considered the dumbbell shapes, or sometimes we call them the flower petals. And they have three different orientations along like the x, y, or z axis. So don't try to visualize them separately. Try to imagine this all overlapped, where the very center would be where what is? Nucleus. The nucleus. So electrons that are in the p orbitals could be you know, somewhere in here, or in here, or in here, or here, or here, or here. Imagine that's all sort of overlapped. Oh, how do you know where they are? How do we know what electrons are in what orbital? Well, that's the thing. We don't. We don't know exactly where they are. We just know that there's a high probability that they could be here or here or here or here or here or here. Well, you, you almost can't. Because as soon as you figure out where it is, you're changing its motion. That's our uncertainty principle. All right, and if you liked the, uh, the petal shapes, now try to visualize these shapes. And all overlapped. So, yeah. So we sort of have five shapes, um, and in each one we could have two electrons, but that would be a total of 10 electrons that could fit in the d orbital. Now, as far as drawing orbitals or your project, your model, we'll just stick to S and P, but it does get a little crazier as, as it gets bigger and with higher energy levels. And then here's our F orbital. I know, I understand it gets a little more complicated as we get into the higher level orbitals. Um, but one more time, the orbitals are just regions of space where electrons could be found. Trying to explain where the electrons in an atom would be. 
All right. And we really do need to go through an example for you to fully understand, but a few more definitions first. We have the Pauli exclusion principle, which says only two electrons can occupy any one orbital shape. The off-bow principle, which says electrons will occupy the lowest available orbital first, like lowest energy level first, which Niels Bohr sort of already told us. And Hund's rule says the most stable arrangement of electrons is that with the minimum, sorry, with the maximum number of unpaired electrons. Again, allow me to explain this through an example in a moment. Okay, so you have this printed, yes? Yes, okay. All right, so another way of sort of color coding your periodic table is by orbital. Now, that's not to say that the elements right here only have electrons in the s orbital, but this is like a little code to help us figure out where electrons should go. But anyway, the first two columns here, including helium over there, these are the s orbitals, and that's why I've colored it that way in the peri on the wall over there. We have our transition metals, we have our rare earth metals, these represent the d orbitals, f orbitals on the bottom, and p orbitals on the side. Again, let me do an example. Uh, you may notice that the d orbitals lag one. What do I mean by lag one? They're actually an energy level behind. So even though this is energy level four, and we would have some electrons in the fourth energy level, the d's are an energy level behind, so that would be the 3d. Then f's at the bottom. This is the sixth row, but we're in 4f. Okay, so D's lag one, F's lag two. Nope. And do you have that? Yes. All right, I don't want to get the, the markers back out, but find a way of color coding it or shading it to remind you what is S, P, D, and F. So you can just use your marker. So I'll, you can do it like my like I'm about to. Okay, so this is the S. This chunk over here, do maybe vertical stripes, is the P. The middle chunk, diagonal, are the D, the orbitals. You'll still see. Wait for it. Wait for it. It'll hopefully make sense with a little drawing. Okay, so I really want to get to an example. We've got one coming up. So how to write electron configurations. Again, electron configurations is ex an explanation of where the electrons go. Instead of like we did with the Bohr model, where we said, okay, well, there'd be two on the first ring, <coughs> eight on the next ring, whatever on the third ring. This is the better way of explaining where electrons go. And you're going to want the periodic table that's on the wall to help you. Okay, so we're going to use our periodic table where we've labeled the S, P, D, and F. We're going to read it like left to right, just like a book, starting the top, going down. We're going to include electron configurations from everything that came before. And there's a shortcut using the noble gases. Row number represents the energy levels. D lags one, F lags two. We'll get the hang of it. So here's example number one, oxygen. Let's start with what we do know. We do know how to do the Bohr model. Okay, so this is our sort of okay with the energy level idea, but incorrect idea of where electrons go. So I'm just going to do the shortcut Bohr model here. And in fact, it's oxygen. So how many rings was I supposed to have, or how many energy levels? Okay, oxygen's in row two, so it should have two rings. And how many electrons does it have? Eight. Okay, so I want to explain where those eight electrons go. That's the point. Where do those eight electrons go? In the Bohr model, we would just simply say how many went on the first? Two, two and then six. Six. It always starts out as two. 
The first string can only have up to two. And then the next one, make it full or make it eight. Yeah. The next one can only have eight anyway. All right. So I'm going to try to switch over to this one for video purposes. Do you guys have the, the periodic tables on the walls to help you? So when I want to do an electron configuration, I A, have to find where the element is. Okay, it's there. It's got eight electrons. That means including it, how many boxes came before it? Eight. And the way we sort of color coded our periodic table, each box is an explanation of where one electron goes. So I want to get to oxygen, which according to the colored periodic table on the wall, it would be like this box right here. I want to get to this box. I start like I'm reading a book at the top. And I go through every single box before I get to oxygen. So if I'm starting here, this is representing where one electron goes. What row am I in? One. So I have, and then how many of the red boxes are there? Two. So that means I have two electrons in the first energy level, and the red boxes corresponded to what orbital shape, S, P, D, or F? S. S. OK, so let's start writing. So we write one for what again? The row. The row. We went through row one. We write the S, why? Because that's the orbital we're in. The red boxes are always going to be S uh, orbitals. And then how many red boxes do we go through? Two. two. So then we write a little two up top, almost like an exponent. And the little numbers up top are the numbers of electrons. So we have two of our electrons in the first S orbital, the first lowest energy level spherical shape. But I did not get to oxygen yet, so I've got to keep going. Now I go down to row two. All right, so if I'm in row two, I start by writing a two. The red is represented by what letter, what shape? S. I still have another spherical shape, but it's at a higher energy level, so we would draw it a little bit bigger. So I've got two S, and then how many red boxes? Two, and you should kind of notice how many red boxes are there ever in a row? Two, it's always going to be two. And then I keep going across row two, and I get to another color. So if I get to another color, I've got to like rewrite. I'm still in row two, but if I'm in the green section, that was what orbital? P. And then I just kind of have to count how many boxes to get over to oxygen, including the box itself, four. So this is actually the explanation of where oxygen's electrons are. Now to draw it, which hopefully will make sense, our electron configuration. Now I actually want to jump down to the picture. What does this picture look like? And you know, it is very a difficult thing to draw. This is supposed to be a 3D model. But also, your project is going to be an orbital model. Not a Bohr model, but you guys are going to do an orbital model. And all right, here is an example from years past, to the best of our ability. You see, and this one's actually just kind of loose, obviously some, some rings, some circles. These were actually supposed to represent the spheres. And then hopefully you can kind of see the petal shape idea. And that was for the P orbitals. But to draw it, OK, I'm going to start with a the nucleus. There's just that. All right, and then I've got to draw each of these little chunks. All right, so 1s2. S meant what shape? Sphere. All right, well, as far as drawing out on a piece of paper, I'm kind of limited to drawing a circle. So we'll start with a circle. But it is a sphere, and the electrons could be anywhere in that sphere. I'm going to put them on the ring just so our picture doesn't turn into a huge mess. But realize that the electrons could be anywhere in that circle. And we, I'm going to put two dots because, of course, there were two electrons I was trying to represent. All right, on to the next part. 2s2. What's that? A sphere. Another sphere. So it's kind of looking like a Bohr model, at least to start. 
this. And I made it a little bit bigger because this is a higher energy level. It's the two, second energy level rather than the first energy level. All right, and two dots there, so maybe I'll go over here this time. All right, so far so good. Now we get to some petals. Yes, and I'm trying to draw this. So this is how. Okay, so there's like one shape, one part of the P orbitals. That was just like the vertical. Then there's also the horizontal. So then we'd have like over here and over here. And I am making it just a little bit bigger than that S orbital because it is a little bit higher energy level. Now, how do I indicate one of those petals is like coming out of the paper or not? Um, we actually were going to use dotted lines to indicate it's coming out of the paper. But then there's also a petal going into the paper. So to the best of our drawing ability, like kind of make one narrow. That's supposed to be like into the paper. And then a dotted one is supposed to be like out of the paper. I know. So this model right here has got like the, the green, the lime green, P, and also the yellow. So there's two sets of P orbitals here. But this is what I mean by three-dimensional. So I have the up, the down, the right, the left. But then I have one coming at you and one coming at me. So that's what I'm trying to indicate. One into the piece of paper and one out of the piece of paper. But it is done with dotted lines. And I've got four electrons to draw there. So how many of my little petals will sort of be left blank? Two. There's six petals. You only have four electrons to draw. So there's just leave two empty. And again, theoretically, they could be anywhere in those shapes, in that petal shape. But we just kind of put them on the outside for ease of counting. So one, two, three, and I'll go with four down here. So leaving sort of two empty. Ta-da. Not too bad? Horrible. Horrible. OK. All right, Blake first. Because theoretically, these electrons could be in there. They could be anywhere in those petals. You always will draw six. Yes, even if they're not full, you draw six petals. Yep. Like. Seven, but yeah. Right. And as far as me asking you to draw certain ones, we will have, we'll draw some that are in like the third row. So you'll have, you'll have another set of P orbitals, but I won't go bigger than that for you drawing it. And we'll never draw one in the D orbitals. That would be kind of ridiculous. But as far as S and P, we can draw that. OK, so now how to do this as a shorthand. Um, the shorthand notation is to find your element and then go to the previous noble gas. So let me see if I can toggle back to my periodic table for one second. Uh, the previous noble gas to oxygen, meaning what noble gas has an atomic number less than eight? There's only one thing. Noble gas is going to be column 18. So it's helium. So we actually just take helium and stick it in brackets because now this is somewhat unnecessary for oxygen, which is so small anyway. But helium was this part of the electron configuration. If I had said do an electron configuration for helium, well, we would have just done 1s2. So helium represents this part. And then, so we put the noble gas that came before in brackets. And then we just do the row that you're currently in. So oxygen's row is row 2. So I would have to write all that back out. 2s2, 2p4. Obviously not much shorter for oxygen, but for something towards the bottom of the periodic table, that's going to be significantly shorter. Uh, Hun's box diagram also is explaining something about electrons, but this is now explaining something about electron spins. 
So we also have to explain where or how electrons are spinning. So just like the Earth is spinning on its axis, like we're going around the sun and spinning on our own axis, uh, so are electrons. They're moving around the nucleus and they're spinning. So we indicate their spin in one of two ways. You know, they're either basically spinning like clockwise or counterclockwise. And we indicate that as saying they have an upspin or a downspin. Um, and our, our rule for Hund's box diagram, we just draw these little boxes to represent the electrons, um, is that electrons are paired. So one S2, so I've got two electrons, so hence I'm going to draw two arrows here. One up, one down. If you have to pair them up, there's always going to be one up and one down. And that sort of cancels out. And there is a you know, unique relationship between electricity and magnetism. But this idea of the spinning electrons is actually where magnetism comes from. When we don't have the spin sort of cancel out, um, creates a little electric magnetic field. All right, two S2, okay, I've got two arrows, so one up, one down. But now we've got four in the p orbitals. And again, I have the three boxes, because so, it's sort of those three sets of pedals the up-down pedals, the left-right pedals, the into the board, out of the board pedals. And I've got four electrons to draw, so four arrows to draw. But the rule was they have the same spin first. Doesn't matter if they're up or down, but they have the same spin, and we put one per box first before we pair them up. So I've got four to draw. I'm going to make them all have up spins. And then that fourth one I, I can put wherever, but it's going to have the opposite spin and be down. So this gives me two sort of unpaired electrons um, with upspins, yeah. How do you know how many boxes to draw? Okay, how do you know how many boxes to draw? That's a good thing to maybe write in the little margin. It just goes up. It's sort of based on the little shapes within the orbitals. So the S shape is just the one sphere, just the one shape. The P shape is sort of those overlapping petals, three sort of sets of petals. So three just goes up by odd numbers. Then what do you think E's going to be? Five, and what do you think F's going to be? Seven. So, and then the maximum number of electrons per orbital is double that. So I can fit two electrons in the S orbitals, I can fit six in the P, ten in the D, and up to fourteen in the F. We got one last little thing to figure, uh, to draw our Bohr model. Our, our Bohr model was just the rings, and how many rings would we draw for oxygen two? Which sort of, sort of fits here because there's two energy levels. Of course they're not just rings, but two rings. How many fit on the first? Two, six. Six? Six. <laughs> All right, ta-da, you made it through one. Did I draw six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Take that long, just no. Well, I was obviously taking my time, but they'll go quicker. All right, example, let's do another one quickly. All right, another example, silicon. So, step number one, find it on your actual periodic table. All right, it's number 14, there it is. So I've got to explain electrons go. It gets competitive. We're going to start at the top, row one. Okay, so I'm going to go through row one. And I've got red boxes, so that's what orbital? Red boxes. Always starts out this way, one F2. All right, now I've got to go through row two entirely. So, good. Two, S because it's red, and two because there's two boxes. Always start off with one yep, it, they'll always all start this way. Um, all right, then I'm still in row two, but I get to a new color, so I got to write something else. P6. Perfect, you guys got it. Two P six. Now down to because it's row two. Okay, now I'm in row three. So three. Okay, because I'm in row three. S for the red box is two because there's two boxes. And now I come on over to the green, but wait, pause. Let's remember where silicon actually is. It's only like two steps into the green. So, 
No. 3P2. You got to get to the box itself. So that's aluminum and that's silicon. So three for the third row, P for the green, and two because there's two boxes to get over to silicon. Now, the shorthand at least will be shorter here. What is the shorthand? What is the noble gas? So neon, if I had told you to do, because neon is a noble gas, remember 18 is the noble gases, it's a noble gas that comes before you get to silicon. So it's just the one above it. So it's just the one above it. Okay, now neon is all of this. That is neon. If I had said do an electron configuration for neon, you would have stopped here. So by putting neon in brackets, I'm representing all of this, and I just have to do the one row that silicon was in. 3s2, 3p6. A lot shorter. And by 6, I mean 2. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Hun's box diagram, and I'll let you guys do shorthand as well, because that's just boxes. So you the box diagram shorthand. I've got to draw boxes for 3S and 3P. Just kind of write that down there, 3S, 3P, which you just wrote. How many boxes for S? One. How many boxes for P? Three. Three, and even if some of them are empty, we still draw all three. How many electrons were in the 3s? Two. So I've got to represent an upspin and a downspin, clockwise, counterclockwise. And now here, I only have two electrons in the 3p orbitals, but yeah. So don't pair them up. Fill each box before you pair them up, and they have to go the same way. You can make them both go down if you wanted, and you can go like that if you wanted. It doesn't matter. But don't pair them up until you have one per box. And make them have the same spin first. Is it always? Well, this one was two, but this could have been up to six. I could have up to six arrows to draw. All right, Ethan. I don't get the arrow part. The arrow part is based off of the number of electrons. All right. Okay, so there were two here, so I got to draw two arrows. Same, there was two here, so I got to draw two arrows. The rules for drawing the arrows. Put one per box before you pair them up. So this would be incorrect. Don't do that. Because they're paired up and I have empty boxes. Fill the boxes before you pair them up. This would be incorrect. Because they have the same orientation, up or down, before you pair them up. So that's OK, too. Orbital drawing. This is kind of a big one. And as far as me asking you to draw them, I would only ever go up to, well, I guess we go up to calcium. I think calcium would be the biggest one I'd ask you to draw. But all right, start with our little dot for our nucleus. So we've got to show for silicon where 14 electrons go. All right, so just go through your electron configuration. I've got to start with a 1s orbital, which means a what? A sphere, the lowest energy sphere. I'm going to draw it small because this one's going to get a little bigger. How many electrons are in that sphere? Two. Two. Remember, they could be anywhere in the sphere, but I'm just going to draw them on the circle itself. Good. Then I've got to do another sphere for the 2s level. A little bit bigger. And good. Another two dots are in that sphere. Then I've got to start drawing some petals. And OK, so 2p6, so still draw all six petals. <coughs> of course, these will be full. Up, down, left, right. Up, down, left, right, always six. In, out. The in is, you know, kind of a skinny little one, supposed to be into the board. And then one sort of di dotted line at you. And that's full. So I've got six electrons in the 2p orbitals, so put a dot in every petal.
All right, keep going. 3S, what's that? Another sphere. Higher energy level, even bigger. And how many go in there? Two. Two. I'll put them here and here. Again, they could still be anywhere inside that sphere. And 3P2, our last orbital. Petals again. Six more. Draw all six petals, even though some will be empty. But they still could be in any of them. It would have helped if I had given you colors. And I just have two electrons to draw, so pick your favorite two petals to put your electrons in there. All right, as a Bohr model, silicon was in row three, so how many energy levels? Three, it is still three energy levels. How many on the first string? Two. We had 14 electrons, okay, then eight, and then four. All right, doing well. Two more. Iron is a transition metal, so iron's sort of in the middle of the periodic table, but we gotta think about where that actually is on sort of our colored periodic table. It's how many boxes into the transition metals. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so if we look over here, that's the orange chunk. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I expect, essentially I have to explain all the way out to this particular box. Um, now, there was a rule you wrote down in your notes that maybe you don't remember, but the rule was that the D, which is the orange section, the D orbitals lag one. So when we get to that energy level, where we have to go through the d orbital, we don't say the row we're in, we say the number before. So iron is in what row? Four. four. So it's not actually the 4d, it's the 3d. Everything else should be the same. So if everything else is the same, we should be pretty good at the top part by now. Going through row one, we're gonna write what? 1s2. Okay, row two, we're gonna write 2s2. Two for the row, S for the color, and two because there's two boxes. And then? Six. There are, there are six P, six green boxes. So second row, green was P, six boxes, two P6. All right. Then the third row, three S2. Good. Keep going. And then we go through some more greens, three P6. All right, now pause. If I stop here, technically I have done what element? Argon. And that's going to be my shorthand, so I'm going to just write argon. That is argon's electron configuration. But now we've got to go through row four to get to iron. Okay, so row four is right here. So I still start with what? 4s2. And now I finally get to the orange where I write 3d, not 4d, 3. Because d lags 1. 3d, and then it took us six boxes to get to iron. So 3d6. So this part was simply what I've got just from going through row 4. So this is a little chunk I'm going to stick after argon. 4, S2, 3, D6. That would have been a lot easier. The Huns box diagram shorthand. Of course, we'd write argon. How many boxes for S? One. How many boxes for D? Five. five. And again, you do need to draw all five. One, two, three. And I do sort of put the energy level and the orbital underneath it. So S is full, so that means what? One up, one down. 
But again, the 3D is not full. There's only six electrons in that orbital, so there's only six arrows I should draw. How should I draw them? One in each box, all the same way. Except for one box. Not because it lags one, because we're drawing six arrows. Yeah, opposite way, pick your favorite box. There you go. Doesn't matter. Doesn't, that doesn't matter either. These could have been all down and one up. All right, our Bohr model. We're in row four. This would be an interesting one to do. I'm just going to write them. One, two, three, four. Four rings. We're in row four, and we've got 26 electrons to account for. So. 26 to account for. So of course we'll start out with how many on the first? Then? No, it's not. Shh. All right. This is also why we haven't done Bohr models this big. But to correctly do the Bohr model, you're simply indicating what energy levels those electrons are on. And to get that correctly, you need to look at your electron configuration. On the first energy level, I had two. On the second energy level, I had eight. On the third energy level, so look for all the threes. On the third energy level, I had how many? And on the fourth energy level, I had now, you guys recognize that this does not seem stable. We like sets of eight. And you are correct. And iron may do something called like hybrid orbitals, um, which we're not going to get into. But you are correct. This is not necessarily a very stable electron configuration. But you actually do get the energy levels from the electron configuration. Does that make sense? We just look. The, the ones, the twos, the threes, and the four. Okay, one more. One more. All right, let's find something which is tungsten. All right, which is again in the middle of our um, transition metal section. W tungsten. All right, but it's in what row? Six. Okay, look at the other wall. If you're in row six, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, what do you go through here? F. F. So that's why this periodic table is helpful on the wall because it has the F sections, you know, stuck in there. Where exactly is W again on that wall? Okay, it's one, two, three, four. Remember, this little box is technically LA. Um, so, at, like, because this is 57, um, so cause that comes right after 56, but this is LA, and okay, wait, look back over here. LA is actually in the orange section, so be a little careful there. LA is orange. We, it's, it's useful in the, the D orbital section. Um, so LA counts as this one, and then AC counts as this box on the bottom. Yeah, it's like getting whiplash here. Then we go through all of the rare earth metals, all. There's actually like 15 across. Technically LA is part of the rare earth metals, but for electron configuration purposes, this would be an orange box. Anyway, so LA is one of our orange, two, three, four orange boxes, four orange boxes. So here's one of our orange boxes all the way through the Fs, two, three, four. Okay, so that is where I need to go. You with me? <laughs> that box is the same box as tungsten on the other wall. Okay, well, let's get going. One S2. Keep going. All right, we're going to have 2S2. Let's go 2S2. All right. 2P6. 3S2. 3S2. Now 
in third row, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2. All right, now slow down a little bit. Four, row four does cut through the transition metals. So we lag one, so that's three, D, 10. Because D is a transition metals. D is the orange chunk. Orange chunk. Chunk on our wall. All right, so now keep going through row four. Does the P lag one? No, so we're back to four, four P6. And we don't rearrange this, but your chemistry teacher may want you to like reorder this later so the threes are together, the fours are together, the fives are together. We're not, yeah. All right, now we're in row five. All right, five S2, I should have started writing smaller. Five S2. And then, okay, you don't have to worry about the F yet. Lag one, so four D10. And then back to five P6. Okay, and now we're finally in row six where we're trying to get to tungsten. So six S2. And then, and this is where like, since you're gonna end back up in the orange boxes, just save the orange boxes and do them all together. Now, if you were gonna end up in the blue box, like, okay, what element, what symbol would this box right here be? I mean, what element actually is this element? CE. Okay, that technically would be CE. And if we wanted to do CE, we would say, you know, 6S2, lag one, 5D1. Because there's just that one box. And, and we're lagging. And now F doesn't lag one, but F lags two. So we're in row six, so that's going to be 4F1, if we were going there. But we're actually going all the way through the F. And we go all the way through the F, so it lags one, so it's four F, how many F boxes? Four, yeah, if you count those blue boxes, there should be 14. Not to be confused over here, because I know there's 15 boxes over here, but technically LA was what color? Orange. Orange. So refocusing on row six. We started out with simply 6S2. Done that before. Now technically I could say 5D1, but I'm gonna wanna keep all the 5Ds together. And since I know I'm coming out over here with some more 5D orbitals, I'm gonna wait on that and just do that together. I'm gonna do now the blue section, which is gonna be Four, because it lags two, we're in row six, but F lags two, so four F, and there are 14 of those boxes. So you just subtract two from six. Right, lags two, subtract two from the period number. Then I'm going back to my D. So D lags one, so I'm in row six, so that's five. And now remember to count this original you know, box for LA, so there's one orange box, two, three, four. 5D4. So that got a little long, which is why it is really nice. Yeah, the noble class that came on, so put XE in brackets. You guys are doing very well. And then just row six. Like, because we're in row six, so what was the end of row five? Okay, so. The, just the row six part was 6s2, 4f14, 5d4. Hun's box diagram shorthand, all right, so xe in brackets. I actually have quite a few boxes to draw here. We've got the 6s, the 4f, and a 5D. Okay, so S has how many boxes? One. One. F had how many boxes? Seven. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And D had how many boxes? Five. All right. All right, Ethan, how many box how many arrows go in this one? <laughs> Two. How would you like to draw them? Up and down. Up and down. You go down and up. You could, sure. Next box will be drawn all down. Yep. He's getting there. <laughs> yeah. Then what? There you go. All right. All right, that one is full. Every box got an up and a down. But the 5D is a little different. I've only got four arrows to draw here, so how would you like to draw them, Ethan? Oh, that's up. No. <laughs> up or down? Up. All up. One, two, three, four. And we have one empty box. Yay. All right, and now our Bohr model. Remember to use the electron configuration to help, which is what I failed to do last time. We were in row six. One, two, three, four, five, six rings. Six energy levels. But now, we're going to go back up here to double check ourselves. How many in the first? Two. Two. How many were in the second energy level? Okay, that always eight. That was two and two. Now I gotta find all of my threes. All of my threes. Ah, hence the 18 max from. All right, now we gotta find all of my fours. And that one. So we got two and six is eight and 10. 18 plus 14? 32. 32. 32. Hence where we get the 32 from. We'll go back to green. Now we got to find all the fifth energy level electrons. So here's a 5, 5, 5. That is not 12, y'all. 2 plus 6 plus 4. 12. And how many on the sixth? Just two. 